Good afternoon, everyone. Today is Saturday of the fifth week of Lent. Boy, Lent is almost over, everyone. This afternoon at four o'clock, we begin the Palm Sunday celebration for the weekend. All five Masses. I hope that you'll be able to join us in person, and if not, at least virtually. Well, I'm going to continue our reflection of the Way of the Cross with St. Alphonsus Liguori's meditation. Aren't they beautiful? He does a wonderful job in the reflection of our Lord's passion, death, and for us, the ultimate resurrection. But this meditation during the season of Lent is very good for us. It helps us to dive into the mystery, as I say. So the 11th station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Consider how Jesus, after being thrown on the cross, extended his hands and offered to his eternal Father the sacrifice of his death for our salvation. These barbarians fastened him with nails and then raising the cross allowed him to die with anguish on this infamous gibbet. Well, let's talk about this, everyone. Being nailed to the cross. What a horrible experience. I guess you and I could never understand the horrific nature of being nailed to the cross. We have an idea, right? But to be thrown on the cross like an animal, because Jesus is the lamb led to slaughter, thrown on the cross like an animal, and these barbarians, as St. Alphonsus Liguori mentioned, they fastened his hands to the cross, his feet to the cross, and they nailed him to this infamous gibbet, this infa infamous instrument for our salvation. You know, the nailing of the hands and the feet of Jesus, you know, the, the marks of the nails were here because the hand was really everything, the hand and the wrist. It was all the motion. See, the wrist is mentioned as hand because it makes the movement of the hand. So when they say he was nailed, his hands and his feet, let us understand what hands mean. The whole hand, which means even the mobility of the wrist, right? That's how the hand works. Well, he was nailed right here. There's two bones here. Are you familiar with them? They're called the ulna and the radius. And those two bones, along with the wrist, is a place of point in which the barbarians or executioners would nail these criminals. Because when they hang in crucifixion, the bone stops from cutting through the whole palm. See, if they were to nail him here, our Lord's weight of his body would then rip through the palms of the hands. So they, were nailed, he, they nailed him here and here. But I don't want you to be caught up in the word hand as meaning literally hand because the whole hand is the whole hand, along with the wrist. Yes, and the feet were crossed. The feet, they tell us, was crossed, and they put a little riser, and then they nailed both feet together. Isn't that horrible? Isn't that horrible? You could see, for those three hours from 12 noon to three, how our Lord was in agony, how he was in agony, and he was exhausted from climbing up that hill. When I say climbing, I mean his whole body had to move as he was going up an incline and then stopping at moments on the way as he met people, as he fell. 
all of these things for our salvation. How beautiful these encounters with Christ that we begin to think, I myself must join with Christ during this walk of the Via Dolorosa. I must also join with him. I must understand this pain and this sorrow to understand how my sins has affected our Lord's suffering so much. So he was nailed to the cross like an animal, already exhausted, already whipped, beaten, crowned with thorns, lost a great quantity of blood, fell three times, walked on the incline to Calvary. Then they grabbed him, thrown him onto the cross, and nailed him to the cross. His hands, his feet, and then he's there. The soldier thrust a lance into his side and immediately blood and water flowed out. Very sad, isn't it? Very, very sad. You and I reflect upon this station, how close we must be to Christ as he was to the cross. So you and I must be that close to him. You and I mourn our sins. You and I reflect upon the sins personally and the sins of all humanity that caused this for our salvation. That's the immense love that God has for you and me. All done in the flesh, because the flesh is the hinge to salvation. If it wasn't for the flesh, would we have been saved? No. God chose the flesh to save us. God gave us the flesh to give him praise. God gave us the flesh so that we can love him, know him, and serve him in this world so that we will be happy with him in the next. The flesh of Christ saved the world. Thanks be to the Blessed Virgin Mary who gave him his body in her womb, her yes, the divine nature of Christ from God, the human person and nature by Mary, fully human, fully divine. So when we look at the cross, we understand that it's fully human, this expression of his love, fully human. And we could also say that God died on Good Friday. See, all these things we must think about and reflect as we move through the Via Dolorosa so we can allow what has been done to take root in us and that our life is joined with His. Well, everyone, as we enter into Palm Sunday tomorrow, I hope you're able to come to Mass. I hope that you're able to come and enjoy the beauty of the Holy Week liturgies and services. I told the people today that the liturgical experience is the presence of God among us. I don't want anyone to ever think that the liturgical life of the church is just wrapped in ritual. That's a danger. That's an absolute danger. The liturgical life of the church 
and how she expresses it is that God is among us in the here and the now. That God himself is with us in his word, in his sacrament, walking with us. As the crowd with Palm Sunday, and I'll tell you this tomorrow, were picking palm off of trees, shouting Hosanna to the son of David, walking with him. Some of them would be the same ones who say crucify him on Good Friday. So let us enter into this beautiful time of Christ's entry into the holy city of Jerusalem to begin his last week on earth. God bless you, everybody.